Hi, I'm here to show you the large rocket here that's 3D printed that I'm going to be using for my L3 certification. It's two and a half meters tall, although you can't see the top because it's too big to fit in the frame. And this technology that I used to build this rocket was used to build these rockets as well as many others. These are the rockets I use for my L1 certification, was the one that resembles this one here. And my L2 certification, this one here that I, uh, that I got my L2 certification with. So I wanted to first present these two rockets here real quickly because the technology used in here and many of the parts and much of the flight heritage that's in this rocket was already validated uh, with these smaller rockets. So I'll start off with this one here. So this one here, the what's interesting about this, it is it's only made up of, essentially the rocket itself is only three parts. You've got the nose cone and the, mid, the middle part, which is the, a body tube that screws in to the tail section. And then the tail section's here. So those are it's only three parts. There's no painting, there's no glue, there's no drilling of holes and everything screws together. Even the motor screws in and out. So this is the uh, a single grain 52 motor, 52 millimeter motor. But I can also, there we go. Now the, th the pr threads are printed inside the body tube. This liner here just slips in and can come out and be replaced if need be. Cardboard liner that insulates the motor, hot motor housing from the rocket itself. So um, this is designed for a 1515 rail. All these are just 3D printed, all the wall in one part here for the rail. And uh, the motor, as I said, is a 54 millimeter single grain, but I can also put a two grain 54 millimeter in here, so it would be like a J, J size motor. This is like an I size motor. Um, and, but I could also, with this adapter here, put in a 38 millimeter motor in here. And this is all 3D printed as well. So in, in here is a module that I can undo with this 3D printed wrench. Let's go in here. And I can unscrew what I call the ejection cartridge. So the ejection cartridge is 3D printed cartridge that you can see here with an RCC2 plus board in here, an altimeter that fires the ejection charge right here. This part just screws in. As you saw, I, un I unscrewed it. And it also has the um, attachment for the shock cord. So um, the nose cone also has a module. I can attach the shock cord of the nose here. And this module is the tracking module. It unscrews like so. And I can have, so I have a T3 uh, tracking telemetry transmitter with a GPS on it. There's also an altimeter here, so it's a, it's a redundant altimeter. Uh, this exact module uh, fits into the nose cone of this rocket here. So that's all heritage. This has all been flown and it, and it works. Okay, I don't have a lot to say about the L2 rocket I use other than it's a four inch diameter rocket, the same as the big one here. And, uh, and all this was successfully flown as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make room for this on this table to put all the parts of this rocket. I'm going to take it all apart so we can get into seeing what's inside of these. Okay, so now I've dismantled into its three main parts plus the motor uh, of the two and a half meter tall, 35 pound rocket I'll be using for L3 certification. This motor here is a uh, 
four grained 75 millimeter motor. I currently have loaded it with grains of my own fabrication. And so it's actually an L size motor. So I'm allowed to do that since I'm level two right now. And I'll be doing a test launch. This is the draw bar that holds into the fin section. So the way that works, the motor goes in here like so. And then the draw bar goes down inside and screws into the motor for the forward mounting part. And now it doesn't come out. Okay, so that's classic how that works. Um, everything here is, of course, 3D printed. Uh, these are the 1515 launch lugs printed onto the rocket. And the fins are a classic design with swept angles on the forward and trailing edges and so forth. By the way, I said 1515 for the smaller rockets, they actually have a 1010 rail lugs. So that's the tail section. This is the section that contains the drogue chute, so it normally mates onto here. And this is the electronics bay. So all, all of the attachments that have to detach, like here, have holes. You can see them here. These are all printed into the rocket. These are the holes that have actual metal inserts. And these are for the, um, the uh, 4040, the um, screws, nylon screws, they're used as, as pins to hold everything together. Uh, this part is held to the electronics bay with quarter 20 stainless steel bolts that go through these holes that holds it all together and ditto on the other side. The electronics bay is, is a single part that's um, 3D printed. There's, I believe, 56 holes, all 3D printed all over the place. Um, these holes here uh, have inserts. These inserts are heat formed and screwed into the plastic uh, PLA that I'm using. Um, and then the screws go through the body and into the threaded inserts. And that's how all this gets held together. Each, um, the drogue chute and the main chute, which is over in this part of the rocket, are all um, ejected through a dual redundancy uh, system. So there's two altimeters. There's one over here and one over here. Each altimeter has its own battery, a 3.7 volt uh, LiPo lithium polymer battery, which is on the underside. All this is held together in a, in a, uh, a carriage, a 3D printed carriage that holds the uh, board, holds the on off switch. This is one of the screw type that you put in your screwdriver and you turn it and it turns it on and off. And the lithium polymer battery is held to the carriage by a second 3D printed part on the underside. So it's underneath this board here. So everything is totally redundant. So each board can fire a drogue chute charge and the main chute charge. And then the other board fires the drogue chute charge one second later in the main chute charge at a slightly lower altitude. So you have dual redundancy. Completely totally independent, totally independent charges, totally independent cables, totally independent electronics, totally independent batteries. Okay, on each side there's a bolt that goes through this. This is just one solid, mostly solid piece of plastic. This bolt here goes through there and it has a, um, this is a uh, 5 16 inch stainless steel bolt and it has two eye bolts on it to hook up the recovery systems to and that goes through here. So throughout the recovery system and its one inch tubular nylon recovery cords are all held to these eye bolts like this one here, this one here, this one here and then there's one in the nose cone. So there's a continuous either metal from the 
from the eye bolts, like the, this rod that's going through here, the rod that's going down to the motor. So from the motor through the to this eye bolt through some nylon, one inch tubular nylon, and into here, another bolt that's going through here, nylon, and then it goes into a bolt into here. So there's either nylon tubing or stainless steel from motor to nose cone throughout the whole thing. Okay, so we've uh, we've looked at this. Now the main section is just bigger than the drogue section because the drogue chute is a is a one meter diameter parachute. This main section has a three meter or nine foot diameter parachute in it, and the nose is also held in with 440 nylon screw shear pins, and you can see the shear pin holes printed here, and then these are reinforced with an insert, a metal insert. Okay, now this has exactly the same module that we saw in the smaller rockets for the, the uh, tracking telemetry transmitter, so it unscrews and comes out. Now this one I don't, I've re removed the altimeter which would normally fit in here um, because they're in the eBay here. So that it just has just the tele telemetry, uh, telemetry transmitter and a 3.7 volt 750 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery that powers the telemetry transmitter. So um, the nose cone is a um, one half parabolic curved formed nose cones, all 3D printed. This curve is exactly precisely defined by the math mathematical equation for a half parabol curve. If you want to do a von Kármán curve, you can also plug that into the CAD program that uh, I use to draw all these. And to do a von Kármán nose cone curve, I selected the one half cosine because I like it better because it has more of a rounded nose, so there's less potential of damage on the nose. And so that, and plus, the half cosine, the half uh, parabolic nose cone actually works better at. Uh, subsonic and transonic speeds, which is what this is going to be flying at. Even with an in motor, it'll it'll maybe break the sound barrier. The other ones, especially the smaller one, go faster than the speed of sound when equipped with the right motor. Those have all survived uh, supersonic speeds, all 3D printed. So the technology has been pretty much proven in the smaller rockets. So I, I'm pretty. Uh, Pretty confident that this will successfully fly, at least structurally. The structural part of the rocket should be strong enough. I mean, this thing's like built like a tank. I mean, this is this is all five millimeter thick. Um, what's called PLA plus or tough PLA, so it's a very strong 3D printing material. Uh, I mean, this thing is. I mean, this 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 type of PLA is about equivalent to plywood. So that you can imagine, this is essentially five millimeters of plywood. Uh, it's extremely uh, strong because of its thickness. It's heavy. Uh, it's things built like a tank, but you know, I don't have a problem with weight in this rocket with a big motor. So, uh, so that's why I built it so heavy and so strong. I mean, these fans are just like. I mean, this is again. This is like five millimeter plywood. I mean, this thing. You know, I, I can't. It's strong. So, and of course, this is all one part. There's no glue, there's no seams, there's no things that can break apart at the seams because it's all one part. Uh, so that's it. I'll be launching this uh, in a few days with the l size motor to also prove the design and prove to the world that this actually works. Uh, and then later on, uh, probably a month from now, the next uh, launch site, I'll launch it with an M-class motor for the actual certification. Okay.